Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. Kraft Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. Well, the great Gildersleeve's vacation, like everyone else's, has come to an end. And our hero, full of new health and vigor, is about to take up once more the task of guarding, purifying, and distributing Summerfield's water supply. He's at breakfast now with Leroy and Marjorie. But as he crunches methodically on the sixth piece of toast, he looks and feels every cubic inch of him a water commissioner. My coffee, Unc? Well, since it's not rationed any longer, my dear, I suppose, as a patriotic duty, yes. My only regret is that I have but one cup to give for my country. That'll do, Leroy. The water commissioner's got to be on the alert in these war times, you know. Why? Well, water is one of the important sinews of war, young man. What kind of contribution could our citizens make to the war effort if there were no water to wash in? Yeah, wouldn't that be terrible? Leroy, I believe you enjoy being dirty. Do you consider that... that Shirt clean enough to wear to school? Sure. Besides, it's the only one I've got. What about your face and hands? Are they clean? Oh, sure. Look at his ears. Who asked you? Never mind. Well, what did you have to butt in for? I didn't butt in. You did so. I did not. Quiet. I'll not have the breakfast table made of bedlam with this infernal bickering. Is that clear, Leroy? Yes, sir. I hope it is. Now, Marjorie, don't you try to sound so virtuous. You're just as much to blame as Leroy, if not more so. You're old enough to know a little better. Tea. Yeah. Leroy, come here and let me inspect your ears. Ah, oh, gee, huh? Come here, young man. Oh, for corn's sake. They're perfectly clean, Unc. I washed them till they hurt. When? The day before yesterday. Let me see them. Oh, you don't have to take them apart. Just as soon as you've finished your breakfast. You go upstairs and wash your ears properly, young man. Tee-hee. Yeah, Marjorie, your whole attitude has got to show a big improvement this year, or I'll be forced to take drastic steps. Gee, what kind of drastic steps? I don't know. Gosh. I've been thinking that possibly I should go and speak to your principal at school about you. Miss Goodwin? Huh? Well, I believe that's her name, unless it slipped my recollection. <laughs> oh, yes, Goodwin is the name or something like that. Are you kidding? Leroy, I do not care for that expression. Oh, gosh, Unc, you went to call on her last week and came home holding hands with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you go wash your ears, young man. Okay, okay. And stick in your shirt tail. Okay. Uh, that darn kid. You'd think from the way he talks that he was associated with bad companions. But what companions I see are angels alongside of him. Excuse me, Mr. Gilsey. No, no more toast, thank you, Bertie. I've enjoyed a plentiful sufficiency. You sure have, Mr. Gilsey. There ain't another slice of bread in this here house. Oh, well, you can't run a waterworks on nothing but water. <laughs> what is it you wanted, Bertie? I just found a morning paper under the hedge, and I noticed your name was in it. My name? Where? Where? Where is it, Bertie? Right here. Oh. Oh, here it is. Welcome home, Commissioner Gildersleeve. Well, that's very friendly of Mr. Powers. I must renew my subscription to his paper. What else does it say, Marjorie? Um, this morning, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve will return to his desk as water commissioner following what we trust has been a relaxing vacation. If it wouldn't be too much trouble, we hope he will shortly find time and energy to do something about the taste of Summerfield's water supply which has deteriorated badly in the past few weeks. Why, uh, let me see that newspaper. Wait a minute, wait, there's more. The water now has reached the point where it has a definite taste of onions, a condition which in our father's generation was attributed to the presence of water moccasins. Water moccasins? Why, that's libel. And then it just says, how about some action, Commissioner? By George, he'll get some action, all right. Where's my hat, Bertie? On the hall tree, Mr. Gilsey. Thank you. Well, I'm off. What you gonna do, Mr. Gilsey? Go out to the reservoir and look for water moccasins? No, I'm going downtown and look for a rattlesnake named Powers. Well, Mort, you're not going to hurt him. Well, no, but I'll write him a letter he'll never dare to print. Good morning, Mr. Gillespie. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Fishnet. Morning. Good morning, Commissioner. Morning. Uh, good morning, Mayor. <laughs> yeah, fine morning. Yes, pleasant vacation, I hope. Oh, yes, yes, very pleasant. But glad to be back on the job. <laughs> uh, your secretary will tell you that I've called a little meeting in my office this morning, just the heads of departments. 9.30, hope you can make it. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, I'll be there. Good, see you then. 
Yeah, what does he want with me? Powers is back of this. Powers and his so-called newspaper. Well, by George, if there's anything wrong with that water, I'll, I'll drink it. No, I'm wearing it up now, Mabel. Still on the telephone. Well, I'm wearing it up now. I wore it down for a few days, but then I decided to look better up, so now I'm wearing it up. Of course, Herbie likes it down, but I've decided now I don't like Herbie. Bessie! Oh, I'll call you back, Mabel. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're back from your vacation. And you're right where I left you two weeks ago on the telephone. I know. The service is terrible. It... I guess it's the war. I was saying only the other day that... Could I interrupt your analysis of the situation long enough to take a letter? Oh. Oh, yes. I'll just get my book. Letter to Mr. Frank Powers, editor of the Summerfield Indicator. Here, Mr... Where are you going? My, my book. I had it here somewhere. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, I found it. It was right under the flower pot all the time. Naturally. Let's see now. Where was I? Oh, it leaked on it. <laughs> Bessie, I'm trying to dictate a letter. Uh, I'm sorry. To the editor of the indicator. Dear sir. <laughs> now what? I have to sharpen a pencil. <laughs> Bessie, have you ever thought of going into war work? You'd make a wonderful bottleneck. <laughs> you just say that. Uh, there. I'm ready now. Well, I'm not ready. I'm all out of the mood. Doggone it, now I gotta go back and get mad all over again. Uh, the water tastes bad, huh? Man says the water tastes bad. Oh, it tastes bad, does it? Bessie, bring me a glass of water. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yellow journal. Talk about leaving a bad taste in the mouth. Powers ought to read some of his own editorials. Here you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, paper cups now, huh? Mm-hmm. We got those while you were away. Well, uh, we'll just see now. Uh. Do you like it, Mr. Gildersleeve? Bessie, you're my witness. I never tasted finer drinking water in my life. Cool, clear, and refreshing. That's what the man said. What man? The man who brings the bottles every week. The bottles? Bessie, what are you doing with bottled water in this office? Well, the tap water got to tasting kind of funny, so I have to put in a cooler. Get that thing out of here. Hello. Oh, uh, tell his honor. I'll be right down. Sorry to keep him waiting. <laughs> well, I guess I've got to face it. Bessie, get that water cooler out of sight. If anybody wants me, I'm going down to the mayor's office. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, yes, Bessie, what is it? I just remembered there was some message I was to give you when you came in. Let's see now, what was it? Bessie, I'm in a hurry. Oh, yes, the mayor called. He wants you to come down to his office. That Bessie, I'm going to have to let her go. Gildersleeve, you know all these gentlemen, I believe. Judge Hooker. Oh, sure. Hello, Gildy. Mr. Halloran, Mr. Peel. Ah, and here's Mr. Powers. Now we can proceed. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Well, Gildersleeve, we had a little notice about you in our editorial column this morning. I saw it. No hard feelings, I hope. If you'd like to know my feelings, just step outside with me for a moment. All right, all right. Let's get down to business now, gentlemen. Just be sure you don't make any charges you can't prove, Powers. That's all. There's such a thing as libel, you know. Yes, and there's such a thing as freedom of the press. Come, come, gentlemen, we have important business. I brought you all together here to discuss something that reflects serious disgrace upon the town of Summerfield. Mr. Mayor, if you're referring to the water department... Nobody's talking about the water department. I'm talking about the third war loan drive and Summerfield's part in it. Frankly, our showing so far is way below what it should be. I think there's a reason for that. The reason is that we're all lying down on the job. Speak for yourself, Powers. No, I think the reason is we're not properly organized. We've got to figure out where the money is and go after it. Now, the first national of Summerfield. Does anybody know how much they bought? No, oh, you're all wet there, Judge. It isn't the banks. They're only a drop in the bucket. It's the people who've got the money. It's the $25 and the $50 bonds that add up. All right, how are you going to sell them? You know so much. How would you go about it? Well, you all know what they're doing over in Riverton. They've pledged themselves to sell enough bonds to build a gunboat, the USS Riverton. And they've already gone halfway to their quota. Working over there. That's why the indicator started this campaign to get Summerfield to build the USS Summerfield. Which is nothing but a publicity stunt for the indicator, and you know it. Oh, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, I think you owe Mr. Powers an apology. Powers owes me an apology. I suggest we forget our personal differences and get on with the bond drive. <laughs> the way it's been going so far, the USS Summerfield is going to turn out to be a rowboat. Well, I refuse to believe that Summerfield is any less patriotic than Riverton. How about it, gentlemen? 
Are we going to take this lying down? No, by golly. No. Certainly not. That's what I say, Gildy. Then let's pitch in. I'm at your service, Mr. Mayor. That's the spirit I like to see in my commissioner's Gildersleeve. Now, I've appointed Powers here as chairman in charge of the whole drive. What? And I'm asking each of you to serve under him as sub-chairman. He'll assign the territories you're to cover and so forth. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Mr. Powers? No, except to say that we're really going to try from now on to make this an all-out drive. We're asking all businesses, as well as the schools, to close at noon, beginning today. I've already sent out instructions to that effect. So that everybody can get out and sell bonds. And that means everybody. You hear that, gentlemen? Everybody. And tomorrow night, there'll be a rally in which you'll all be expected to take part. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gildersleeve. I think I may say that I'm as good an American as anybody here. Nobody questions that, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've always done my part, and I'll continue to do so. I'll go out in the street and sell bonds. But I must decline to serve on any committee or appear on any platform with the Honorable Chairman. Guilty! Until he withdraws certain faults and malicious charges made about me this morning in the public prints. Good day, gentlemen. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, just me. Hello, Marjorie. What are you doing home at this time of day, Unky? Office is closed. I have to go out and sell bonds door to door. Oh, you poor darling. On such a hot day, too. Well, it's got to be done, my dear. There's no use spoiling my lunch over it. No, of course not. There's some mail for you. That'll spoil my lunch for sure. Here you are. Uh, bills and circulars. There's no time of the month to be sending out bills or circulars either. If I didn't... Oh, what's this? Well, well, what do you know about that? Sounded pretty good from here. What is it? Oh, nothing really. Uh, only uh, gratitude is such an unusual thing that, well, well, I'll read it to you. It's from that Miss Goodwin, Leroy's principal. Oh. No, no, nothing like that. No. Just a nice letter, my dear. Yes. Yes. Uh, dear Mr. Gildersleeve, I've just learned the true motive behind your call on me last week. You need not have gone to such pains to spare my feelings. A progressive teacher soon learns to expect opposition from some of the parents. But it's seldom she has the good fortune to have one of them rise so generously to her defense as you did. I'm very grateful, believe me, and hope soon to have a chance to thank you in some more personal way. Sincerely yours. Isn't that nice? Sure, but I don't get it. Well, some busybodies objected to her being put in as principal. Oh. They delegated me to take steps. But as soon as I called on her, I could see at a glance she was a fine educator. So I told her to pay no attention to them. Oh. You know, I think I ought to go over and see her this afternoon. Thank her for this note. Don't you think so? Gosh, no. Why should you? Well, uh, gratitude is such a rare thing, my dear. It should be encouraged. But, Unc, I thought you were going to sell bonds. Bonds? Oh. Well, this is right on the way to my territory. <laughs> Bet you never make it. Yeah. I've run now. Goodbye, dear, and be careful. Yeah, don't worry about your old uncle. <laughs> I'll see you at supper. Uh, let's see now. What did she say? I'm very grateful, believe me, and hope soon to have a chance to thank you in some more personal way. <laughs> well, I think I'll give that lady a chance to make good on that promise. <laughs> School's closed. She ought to be home. <clears throat> Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, what a pleasant surprise. Come in. Thank you. I uh, got your note, Miss Goodwin, and I, uh, well, I thought I'd drop around. <laughs> oh, well, when I heard what you'd done, I simply had to write to you. Oh, it was really nothing. Anyone interested in education would have done the same thing. <laughs> oh, well, I don't believe that. I think you were very brave and wonderful to do it. You do? Well, I think you're a very wonderful uh, grammar school principal. Oh, thank you. No, I mean that. I, I was going to come and see you anyway. I wanted to talk to you about my uh, nephew. Yes, he's in your school. Oh, well, I'll be glad to help in any way I can. Come in and sit down, won't you? Well, I can't stay very long. No, not very long. i got to sell some bonds this afternoon. Well, well, that's all this, eh? An art exhibition? Oh, no. Now, those are posters the children at school have done for the bond drive. 
They're going to distribute them all over town this afternoon. Oh, very clever work. Oh, are, are you interested in painting? Am I? I've got every art volume ever put out by the Book of the Month Club. Oh, really? Well, then you'll appreciate this poster here. I, I think it's got some of the feeling of Grant Wood. Oh, yes, I can see what you mean. Remarkable uh, chiaroscuro, too, for a child, don't you think so? Oh, yes, yes. Remarkable uh, chiaroscuro, yes. <laughs> Here's one that's quite futuristic. The child told me these were supposed to be airplanes. These? Yes. Very poor, in my opinion. No wing flaps. Oh, my. You certainly are refreshing, Mr. Gildersleeve. Refreshing? Mm hmm. Most men are afraid of painting, they think of it as art with a capital A. They're afraid to have an opinion one way or another. That's not my way, Miss Goodwin. Why, if Rembrandt himself was to walk in here and ask me what I thought of his painting, I'd tell him straight from the shoulder. <laughs> Rembrandt is wonderful, isn't he? Yeah, and that's what I'd tell him. <laughs> <laughs> have, um, have you ever tried to paint, Mr. Gildersleeve? Paint? No, not really. I used to sketch a bit in my younger days. Well, why didn't you keep on with it? You might have become a great painter. No, I don't think so. I can never get the nose in the right place. <laughs> but you know something? If I could paint, I'll bet you'd make a wonderful model. Oh, oh Mr. Gildersleeve, you, you don't mean that. Oh, yes, I do, Miss Goodwin. You've got the chiaroscuro. <laughs> and you got plenty of it, too. <laughs> Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I think we'd better talk about your nephew. Oh, he can wait. Someday when we have lots of time. Well, uh, let's sit down, shall we, if we can find a place? Everything's awfully messy with all these posters. Well, uh, the sofa's all empty. Yes, well, uh, you take that. I'll sit here in the little rocker. Oh, not very sociable. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Well, hello. Well, Unc, for Pete's sake. Leroy. Aha! Uh -huh. I'm helping Miss Goodwin. Uh, so this is your nephew, Mr. Gildersleeve. He's one of our best little workers. He's a spy at heart. I'm not spying, Unc. I just came here to get some posters to take around to the stores. Didn't I, Miss Goodwin? Oh, trying to get in right with the principal, eh? Well, what are you doing? <laughs> I'll see you later, young man. Goodbye, Miss Goodwin. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Oh, hello, PV. Now, be right with you. Just finishing up a prescription here. How are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? PV, I'm tired. I thought I'd just, just drop in for a moment and rest my bones, if you don't mind. Yeah, not at all. Sit down there at the counter. Uh, up a little late last night? No, no, just tired. It's just bond drive. House to house stuff, you know. Very wearing. No, you've been out soliciting. Yeah, that's it. I haven't actually started yet, but I get tired just thinking about it. Hmm. I know how it is. Whenever I hear they're starting a new drive, I lay in a good stock of footies. Say, uh, you wouldn't want to buy a bond, would you, Peavy? Well, I'll uh, tell you That's I... all right. This isn't my territory anyway. I just thought I might sell one while I'm sitting here. Well, I'd like to give you my trade, Mr. Gildersleeve, but the fact is you're a little late. Your nephew, Leroy, was in here and signed me up at the crack of dawn. That kid is everywhere. You know something, Peavy? Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm getting tired of this war. I'm getting tired of hearing about it. Well, I guess we all are, but... I'm getting good. tired of a lot of things. Getting tired of these energetic women. Always doing things. Always winning the war and making posters. That's not what women are for. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I mean it. I like a woman who's a little old-fashioned. I like a woman who isn't too busy to, well, be charming. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like a woman who's feminine. I like a woman who... You just like women. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It happens you're wrong, Peavy. I'm a one-woman man. Mm, maybe you are at that. Tell me, do you uh, ever hear from her? From who? Mrs. Ransom. When is she coming back? Who said anything about Mrs. Ransom? Uh, sorry, my mistake. Yeah. You're barking up the wrong tree, Peavy. That's all over and done with. Yep. That chapter in my life is a closed book. But I might just go back and take a peek. Hi, Unc. Leroy, are you following me? What are you doing here? I brought Mr. Peavy a poster for his window. 
What are you doing here? I thought you were going to go out and sell buns. What I do is my affair, young man. I'll tell teacher. All right, all right, I'm going, Legree. Oh, uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, will we see you at the rally tomorrow night? No, Peavy, you will not see me at any rally conducted by Mr. Powers. I'll win this war my own way. <laughs> Of this great state and of this great municipality of Summerfield? Yes, I say to you, my friends, I say to you, civilization today is looking to us. Not to you, not to me, but to all of us. Are we going to fail it in this, its hour of need? What is the answer? You better wind it up, Judge. They're going to sleep on you out there. I'll tell you the answer. The answer is no, a thousand times no. Not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but a thousand times no. You'll never wake him up that way, Judge. In the words of that great statesman and scholar whose fame will live forever enshrined in the hearts of his fellow countrymen, but whose name at the moment escapes me. For Pete's sake huh? Will you give somebody else a chance <laughs> Well As the horse thief remarked When they hung the fatal noose around his neck I see my time is short <laughs> Before I close I would just like to leave with you One thought Buy war bonds Buy all you can Not one bond <laughs> Not two bonds not three bonds. Uh, thank you, Judge Horace Hooker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judge. I know we're all going to profit by what the judge has had to say here tonight. Say, Frank. Huh? What is it, Judge? Look who just came in. Gildersleeve. Well, what do you know? Why, the old sorehead. I thought he wasn't coming. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please. Uh, this wasn't exactly on the program, but, uh... I'd like to call on somebody now. Somebody you all know. Summerfield's popular water commissioner, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, would you say a few words, Gildy, please? Yeah, come on, Gildy, come on. That's the way. Uh, make way for him there, folks. Get over uh, Make way for the commissioner, that's it. Uh, help him up on the platform, somebody, please. Wait a minute. I'll give him a hand. A uh, couple of you fellas down front there. Get behind him and boost. Come on. Now, wait a minute, Gildy. We need a couple of more volunteers here. That's it. Uh, thank you, sir. All together now. Eve. Steady. Steady. Oops. Oh, Daisy. Eve. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you. I just want to say, folks, that uh, Gildersleeve and I have had our little differences from time to time. We had one this week when my paper cast doubt on the flavor of Summerfield's water supply, of which the commissioner is justly proud. We said it tasted bad. Since then, I've been informed that this is a temporary condition caused by natural phenomena beyond the control of any man. And the water is already, if possible, more delicious than ever. Uh, will that be a sufficient retraction, Commissioner? Or do you want me to print it in the indicator? There's more people here than read the indicator. I'm satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Gildy. Go ahead. The floor is yours. And I hope it'll hold you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, I don't know what I'm doing up here. I'm certainly not going to make a speech. I haven't got one written, and if I had, I'd tear it up. I, I just want to tell you about something that happened to me yesterday. And if it makes you feel the way it made me feel, we won't need any speeches, any of us. I suppose everybody here at this rally has been out canvassing this week. I got around to my district yesterday afternoon. A little late, but at least I got around to it. And I'll admit I was feeling pretty darn patriotic about it, too, giving my valuable time that way. I marched up to the first house, and I knocked on the door. Pretty soon it opened. It was a woman. I said, how do you do? You're the lady of the house, I presume? Yes. Mrs. Uh, Kirk, is it? Yes, that's right. Well, Mrs. Kirk, I'm Mr. Gillisleeve. I'm calling oh, in connection excuse with... excuse me, please. I've got something on the stove. I'm afraid it's boiling over. Come in, won't you? I'll be right back. Oh. So I stepped inside. She had a very small place there. Couldn't have been more than three or four rooms. 
was a child playing on the floor in the living room. A little shaver about two, I guess. I said to him, Hello there. What's your name? I had a little conversation with him. <laughs> nice little boy. Presently, the woman came back from the kitchen. Well, I'm so sorry. Not at all. I was just talking with your son here. Fine lad. Oh, goodness, that's my grandson. Oh, <laughs> well, it's hard to believe. Such a young grandmother. <laughs> uh, uh, Mrs. Kirk, I'm here in connection with a war bond drive. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve... Yes, I know. Me... You've bought bonds. We all have. Personally, I've been investing all I can spare regularly. But are we doing enough? Are we doing all we can? Well, I try. You see, I'm... I know, I know. We all try. That is, we think we do. We put up with our little inconveniences, rationing and so on. We buy a bond now and then when the spirit moves us. But do we make any real sacrifices? Just ask yourself, Mrs. Kirk, do you ever think of the boys at the front and what they're going through? Yes, I do. I think of it day and night because my boy is one of them. Oh. I try to do what I can, but it's a little difficult. You see, my daughter-in-law lives with me now. She works, and I take care of Bobby while she's away all day. No, Bobby, dear, take that out of your mouth, Bobby. Of course, we have Robert's allotment every month, but that still isn't very much to go around. Mrs. Kirk, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come barging in here like this, telling you what you ought to do. Oh, no, now, you mustn't feel that way. Excuse me. Bobby, darling, why don't you run outside and play? That's a good boy. Run along. Cute little fellow, isn't he? Perfect image of his father. I remember when he was just that age. Well, I guess I'll... No, uh... no, please don't go. I, I want you to understand. We want to buy bonds. I'm glad when I can buy a bond, because every time I do, I think, this is for Robert. And I think maybe it'll help to protect him and bring him back safe. It's just that... Well, maybe we don't manage very well. Oh, I think you manage wonderfully. No, I never did have much of a head for figures, but you're a man. Perhaps if you didn't mind, you could look at our budget and show me how we could do more. Well, Mrs. Kirk, I'm no shining example myself when it comes to that. Well, maybe not, but you're a man, and men understand about those things. It'd only take a minute if you don't mind. Well, no, only, gosh, I'd hate to have anybody look at my budget. Well, we want to do all we can. Well, she brought out her budget and made me go over it. And when I saw how little she had to live on, I don't remember all the figures, but there was $35 for rent, $50 or so for groceries, the usual amounts for gas, light, and so on, practically nothing for clothes and such. But every month, about 25% of her income was going into war bonds. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I was so darn ashamed of myself. I got out of there as fast as I could. I didn't try to sell any more bonds that day, I went home and really dug down myself. And if everybody else in this town will do the same, we won't need any more rallies. And there won't be any question about the USS Summerfield. We'll show Riverton we can build a gunboat just as big as theirs and bigger. <laughs> Why, we'll build one big enough to sink theirs. Hey, wait a minute, Gildy. Huh? Summerfield and Riverton are on the same side in this war. Oh, yes, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve program this week was contributed to the Treasury's third war loan drive by the Kraft Cheese Company. Music was under the direction of Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.